so this is just a quick review of speech sounds. Um, we learned a lot about speech sounds in this module and I just wanted to do a quick review um, so that you have a better solid um, understanding of speech sounds and, and how they're produced. So when we talk about speech sounds we can describe them in terms of vowels and consonants. Um, when we look at the consonant sounds those are really what we mostly would be addressing in speech therapy in children are the consonant sounds uh, unless you have a child who might have a praxia of speech or dysarthria but most photological disorders have errors of speech consonants and we talk about speech consonants in terms of the place or where the articulators come together and also which articulators are being used um, whether it's the tongue or the teeth, um, the manner, and that's how the air flows out of the vocal tract, and voicing, whether or not you're using your vocal folds. Each, uh, most speech sounds have what we call cognates. They have a voiced and an unvoiced component where the place and manner is exactly the same, but one of the sounds is voiced and the other sound is not voiced. Um, when we talk about place, this is the here we see the list of um, the different places of articulation. So, bilabial is two lips. So we say bi meaning two and labial meaning lips, and that, those are the sounds that you make with your two lips together. So, the b and p and m, mm, those sounds are bilabial sounds. And going just going down the the list really quickly, we've got labiodental and that is lips and teeth, labial being lips, dental being teeth. We have those sounds, and we'll have a chart coming up here. Um, also, it's in your module of the specific sounds that make each of these. Then we have lingua dental, so lingua meaning tongue, dental teeth, interdental, that's between teeth, alveolar, that's that bumpy ridge behind your top teeth um, up on your palate up there. Some sounds are made up there. We've got paddle, that's the top of your mouth. Feeler, those, that's the back of your mouth. Those are the k and g and ng sounds that are made just before the soft palate. And then glottal, that's made way in the back of the mouth. Uh, there aren't many glottal sounds in the English language. You, you see glot, more glottal sounds in other languages, um, but there are a couple. So now let's talk about the manner. We've talked about the place where the articul uh, where the sound is being produced specifically and what what articulators come together to make that sound. And then we talk about how that airflow is flowing. So a stop or a plosive, those terms are used interchangeably. When we talk about stops and plosives, the air is being coming out of the lungs, up through the trachea, and it's being stopped behind two articulators um, and then suddenly released. So it's popped out. So those are the sounds like t and p, where the air is being, for t, it's being stopped behind your, your tongue and your teeth and then it's being released quickly. And you can't forget about that release part when you're describing those sounds. And p, that air is building up behind the lips. Yes, the lips, and you want to release it quickly. The fricatives, the, that's where um, the air is actually being pushed out in through a very narrow opening. Um, so the sounds like s and sh, there's a very narrow opening, and also you hear a lot of friction in that air. So that's a good way, a way to remember fricative. Then we have an affricate. So an affricate is a combination between your stop or your plosive and your fricative. So when we look at the, the sound ch, the phoneme ch, even the symbol that you see here, it's a t symbol and a sh put together. And when you really make that sound, that's exactly what you're hearing. You're hearing the t and then the sh, but they're put together so it makes the ch 
sound, so that's a, an affricate. Looking at nasal sounds, those are the sounds that go through our nose. So no air flows out of your mouth when you say a nasal sound. It flows through your nose. Now when you say that mm sound, your, lip, your mouth is open, that is helping with the resonance of that mm. And of course, mm, your mouth is closed and all of the air is flowing out of your nose. But for both of those, your air, the air is coming out of the nose. Those are nasal sounds. Um, and so no air comes through the, the mouth. Then we have our liquids. Those are like the l and the er and glides. Um, and so those two sounds, there's not specific places of articulation. That's why these sounds are more difficult to um, remediate because you're not able to say, put your tongue right at this spot um, because it's sort of your tongue is sort of in the middle a little bit and uh, it's not really touching specific articulators um, in order, and it's more difficult to describe that place and that manner. Um, and then the third, so we, we talked about place of articulation, we talked about manner of articulation, and then we talk about voicing when we describe a sound. So voicing where a voiced consonant, the vocal folds are vibrating, and then an unvoiced consonant, we have no vibration in the vocal folds, we just have airflow. So looking at the, the, um, the bilabial plosives, or the bilabial stops, p and b, those are both made, like I said, bilabial, both made with the sa in the same place. The two lips are together. They're both plosives or stops. The air flows up to that point. It's held for a brief second, and then it's released. But the difference between p and b is the voicing. B is a voiced consonant. If you put your hand on your throat. Now good, this is a good trick for kids too. You can feel a little bit of a vibration when you say b, but you can't feel that vibration when you say p. Another way to check that is to um, cover your ears and you can hear that vibration when, um, when you say the b sound and not with p. Um, so those two phonemes are called cognates. One is voiced, one is unvoiced, but they are the same in place and manner, if that all makes sense. So it's important to be able to describe speech sounds and have that sort of map in your mind of the three different characteristics. And that way it will be easier for you to be able to describe how to make those sounds when you're trying to um, remediate them in, in students. Here's the chart that I was talking about. If you look across the top, you see the manner, bilabial, labial dental, etc. And then going down um, the first column, you see stops, fricatives, affricates, and such. And so if you follow the first block there, we've got stop, bilabial stops, and we got P and B. Um, and looking at uh, labial dental fricatives, you see there's F and V, and in each of those blocks of P and B are cognates, F and V are cognates, one is voiced, one is unvoiced, T and D are cognates, the alveolar stops, one is voiced, one is unvoiced, and etc. And you'll see that there is a glottal um, stop uh, that occurs in, um, uh, let's see, let me think if I can think of an a example of a glottal stop. A uh, button might be a glottal stop. It, it's not really a specific sound. It's more made. Um, it's uh, People pronounce those sounds differently. Um, what else do I want to point out here? <laughs> um, I might have said this before, but notice how these, these symbols are... Um, being written with the slashes on either side. Um, some of them are lowercase letters. Those are the actual symbols. So P is the lowercase um, symbol for P and 
or lowercase p is the symbol for the phoneme p, as is lowercase b, phoneme for b. But then if you look at your linguodental f fricatives, that's f and th, the voiced and voiced th, th. Um, the circle with the line through it is the symbol for the unvoiced th and the other thing next to that sort of looks like a loop with a little line that's the voiced th now it's not it's unusual to be able to find these symbols as you're typing on your computer so i often just make the th with the slashes and then note if it's voiced or unvoiced and then the same goes with the sh and zh sounds the sh and the zh it's not, unless you have that symbol set uploaded onto your computer, you, you probably won't find it. So I just would make a, a, an SH with a slash on either side, and they're lowercase. Sounds are generally not made with an uppercase letter. Those, that's not the symbol for those sounds. The symbol is the lowercase letter. Let's, and then now we're going to look at a little bit at vowels. Now vowels you would describe in terms of jaw placement, whether it's high or low, and then you describe front or back tongue placement. Here we have the vowel triangle. It's sort of not a full triangle, but it's called the vowel triangle. And if you can look in the back, you sort of see a, um, a face, a side view of a, a face with the tongue and the lips. Um, and so if you just take a moment and maybe pause, I want you to um, just say the vowels that you see in each corner. So contrasting B and boo, um, think about where the tongue is placed for B versus boo, and down at the bottom for bat, bat versus pot. And then again, looking at the high and low vowels, contrast them, and think about your jaw placement. You can put your hand underneath your chin and say E as in B, and then go down to the bottom, say A ah, as in bat, and you can see, you can feel and see the difference in um, high jaw placement E and low jaw placement A. Ah. And so it's harder to feel the tongue placement, but you can definitely see the up and down jaw placement. And again, this isn't going to be something you'll probably need to do a lot of um, vowel remediation, although you do want to think about when you are trying to remediate specific sounds, um, thinking about the vowels that surround those sounds. Um, so if you want to remediate um, the um, sound, um, you may have an easier time adding a vowel that's in the front and high than you would adding a vowel that's in the back. So you would might want to start with the word C if the child is just combining consonants with the vowels rather than saw where they have to go from having their tongue placed behind their teeth and using that very um, small restricted airflow and the jaws already up high staying at C then you would if you were going you then having them go from to all the way down to the ah with the low jaw and a very back placement of the tongue hopefully this all made sense to everyone um, you will you will you can you're more than welcome to send me messages if you have any difficulty with any part of this module um, this is really a big part of what you'll be doing in the schools so it's an important thing to be able to understand and you'll definitely be getting more in, in depth in this in your Arctic and phonology class so this was just sort of a quick overview so hopefully it was helpful and um, Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>